Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Nerds at the Round Table. We are finally back after a hiatus. I know. We keep on telling ourselves, like, yeah, well, we'll see you guys in a week. <laughs> <laughs> it never happens. Yeah. Well, we've been no. remarkably busy. That's very true. We've been doing a lot. Yeah, and we we still got a lot coming up. Uh, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So Nothing stop uh, that AV life. Yeah, no, be prepared. Uh, we have quite a bit on the docket mm-hmm. uh, for the next couple weeks mm-hmm. on video side. Mm-hmm. I've got some more of the DSP series. Hopefully, I got to get a DSP so I can test um, for you guys. I just have a lot of things, dude. Huh? Just a lot you of got, things. You got recording and editing. You got to do. We do. We have product reviews. What do you mean, to wait? Do. You. I do. You. You. You get your shit done. Damn. Well, I don't get jack I've, shit done. I've, I've let you guys down the past couple of weeks because, you know, I'm traveling because I had to go to Florida and whatnot for Infocom. That's yep. a whole other podcast, but um, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, so. We will. Today. Right now. Right now. This moment. This moment, we will be general tech news of recent events uh, mm-hmm. because we've had Computex, E3, Fuck. Infocom. Oh, my God, we had Computex, too. God. I know. <laughs> so I figure we'd do a little... There wasn't, there wasn't big things at Computex. I figure we could throw it in here with E3. Um, there was definitely There's the whole controversy. X299 platform. What about and- X399? That's 100 better. <laughs> no, it's not. Maybe and if you're mo- if we'll that's a prices. multiplier, then it's got to be a lot better. So we're going to dig into that controversy a little bit. Thread the Ripper, mm. Epic Processors. Oh. Maybe. Oh. Um, well, we, we'll at least touch on it. Mm-hmm. Um, my my now dream, I, I, I've been shopping too much, uh, PC build that I'm, I'm working towards eventually, custom water cooling, video coming to YouTube, hopefully. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, it may be a multi-part series, because it'll be case, custom cooling. I'm not doing hardline. To be honest, fuck that. <laughs> uh, because I want to be able to upgrade yeah. really often type thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I want to stay flex. Uh, but it's going to be super clean. I'm going to take my time uh, and eventually do multiple radiators and stuff like that. So... What's happening? Uh, fireworks. Oh, uh, where? Uh, people shoot them off down the street in the park over there. Just because over there, they're like, "Fuck it." Yeah. Well, it's Friday. We got fourth fireworks. Of, they've they do Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. Oh wow, Fourth of July is coming up. Yeah. So there's already on sale. Oh yeah. What are the uh, fireworks policies in your hometown? Like, how'd you grow up with Fourth oh, uh, of July? <laughs> Is it like go to the park and no. lake and it's like a sky fireworks or is it like blowing shit up in fields? Or? Well, most of the time there is like big name fireworks. Like you go out on the lake and there is a bunch of places like the town of Davidson would do one. Mm-hmm. The city of Mooresville would do one. Like and you it was just all see- like a production where it's like all sky rockets. Oh, right? yeah. oh yeah. yeah. Like super high end stuff. Um, I had a, a girlfriend many 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 years ago many many lived in the country she was on the other side of the tracks oh Um, one of of those girlfriends yeah yeah uh get on the other side of the tracks she she said you had to be careful because during fourth of july people wouldn't shoot off fireworks they'd shoot shoot off off guns guns. yeah just into the air yeah just just falling bullets (laughs) uh so that that was the thing (laughs) Uh, we I like act- how that, that's actually an accurate representation right there. Because <laughs> most people are very drunk at that point, especially in the South. Mm. Uh, so that, that's always fun. Uh, so it's stick with us in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to try and throw some stuff out there and get oh, back yeah. on top of things, create a schedule. I know. What, we, we keep saying it every year. Um, but mm. And we always want you guys uh, to give us feedback. What do you guys like, not like? We're we're, we're here. Um, yeah. Talk all the shit you want. We'll take it. Yeah. As long as it's feedback and constructive feedback, not yeah. like you're gay. <laughs> uh, Fags, just that. I mean, we want to make this stuff better for you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are very early in our careers. 
and we're not consistent, so of course we're not going to be very good. Uh, so we are looking to you guys to help us help you enjoy uh, this stuff better. Mm-hmm. So join us this week as we dig deep <laughs> into Nerds of the Round Table. Someone's excited. At least we got somebody. Uh, <laughs> Hit it. Number one YouTube star. <laughs> All right, and so yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna apologize for the the dog in the background freaking the out. I feel kind of bad. The uh, puppy that she's over there. I know. And the people are shooting off fireworks. I think it's super like cruel, just like shoot them off like when it's not Fourth of July, because there are a lot of people around here with dogs, like a lot. Yeah. Uh, so they all bark when it, this happens. It freaks dogs out. Like, don't do it. Like, it's it's just rude. <laughs> Uh, so I may have to like get up and like console her for a while. It's okay, I'll uh, handle it. So, yeah, you you'll take over the podcast for a while. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, get us started on tech news. I'm gonna go see what she's doing. Okay, so I'll just talk about my own news uh, in my life. Uh, so, um, exciting news for me, I made an upgrade, uh, which I am loving so far. So I had a, this is phone stuff. I'm sorry, you know me loving my phone stuff. Uh, I had a HTC A9, which was like, uh, you know, some I got, you know, unlocked, purchased, you know, mid-range phone. I got it for like, like 400 bucks, I think. Uh, I had that for a while. It broke. Um, unfortunately, like a month and a half ago, I've been working off my work phone for a while now. And so tech news to me, um, news for you guys, too, it's exciting stuff, is I now have this big, blue, beautiful beast. Um, this is the HTC U11. Uh, my HTC fanboyish continues on, and I picked up this upgrade. Uh, which I've been super excited about and loving. I've had some trouble activating it with Sprint because they're fucking assholes. Um, but it's been an incredible relief of having this after both having my A9 for so long and then also having to live with like an iPhone 6S for like two months. Um, I did not really enjoy that experience and it's amazing having this now which i am super pumped about um i just really need to get it activated so i can see what kind of lte speeds i'm getting but it's nice and i'll attempt to get a review going for you guys for this actually that'd be pretty cool get uh some b-roll of that that'd be that'd be a quick little so review. blue oh it is so blue yeah. be nice to get some outside footage Get some sunshine. Yeah, get some, um, and just camera samples and video oh, yeah. samples. Cameras insanely good and, yeah. and fast, and um, 4K video so far has looked good. Took some today nice. uh, and pictures today at Disney. Um, paired some things, downloaded apps. What's actually I f- am blown away the most about on this phone, uh, especially at home. So I have 200 down at home, and I connect faster than this you know i usually get like 230 240 and i get full speed with this but what's insane is the internal storage is like a ufs 2.1 mm-hmm. uh, so the internal storage is crazy fast so that and i think paired with the four gigs of ram when apps install it's like fucking nothing like i go to download an app it's you know an app's only like 50 megabytes or something 55 like I see it go 0%, 70%, done. Installing, done. Like, yeah. Literally just like, it just instantly, uh, I'm used to having longer install times um, because older generation phones had slower internal memory. Yeah. But right now, like apps install like freaking instantly. Mm-hmm. I think it's been optimized a whole lot since the good old days. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
that and kind of I'm without getting into any details. The thing that I noticed also kind of immediately too um, is web browser based video plays back infinitely better than it did on my iPhone. Really? Why? Because uh, it doesn't like freeze and buffer. So mm-hmm. like because um, they're bitches like Polygon uh, embeds like all their videos on their website and don't post them to YouTube. Uh, so that like ESPN, like any website in Chrome uh, that has a native video player okay. that doesn't open in a separate app. So gotcha. like if it's something like on my iPhone, like it's open on YouTube, no problems. If it's something inside of a native browser, because uh, what happens on my iPhone, which I oh, now I'm just assuming is just a RAM problem, is especially if it's a longer video, when you go to scrub it, you have to wait. Like, so you scrub, you see, like, screenshots flash, but then when you go to play, it just hangs there for, like, 10 seconds until it eventually will start playing. So I have to, like, try, like, I'll scrub, go to play, it won't play, I'll pause it, and I'll sit there for, like, five seconds, then I'll play again, and it won't play, and then I'll pause again, then I'll play again, and then maybe it starts playing. But you have to wait for it to catch up, where immediately on this phone, I scrub through videos in a browser, and it plays, like, instantly every single time. Uh, so that I was like immediately surprised and noticed, um, especially, you know, on Polygon, some of the videos are longer or on The Verge. If it's something that doesn't open to YouTube, then, you know, those I can just like scrub through, boom, like jump around and it just mm-hmm. plays instantly. I'm like, that is yeah. fucking cool. We should definitely do a uh, side by side on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll have uh, we'll do some fun stuff with those. Yeah. No need to talk forever about it. But, yeah, that's the biggest news in my life right now. I was actually technology. I was actually super impressed just now. I was showing Sean some video from Infocom. That was 4K video off a of NAS. Oh, and it played off Wi-Fi. I assume that was local. Nope. <laughs> wow. How impressive is that, that right now? That was nice. Cuz it was a I hit spacebar. It was Wait a second, play. Yeah. And it I mean, me scrubbing was... Wasn't bad at all. I mean, half a second, and then it start playing. I was... I fucking love free NAS. Looking at 10 gig cards, though. I was looking at eBay. I actually saw, um, like... Apparently, there's going to be cheaper, like, 10 gig... um, Like, network switches. They just have less ports of 10 gig ports. So you get one with, like, four 10 gig ports. And then you can get, there will be cheaper 10 gig cards mm-hmm. too. Or you can just get a platform that has 10 gig built in. Like well, a lot of the X299, X399 stuff has 10 gig land. Well, what I was looking at was just doing a point to point, not going over the network. So one that would free up traffic, not mm-hmm. going over the house network. So if somebody's watching Plex or something, it's not having to go through that nick directly uh and so it just bypasses all of that stuff Mm -hmm. uh but what would help is going towards something that has more pcie lanes so i i'm not having to go through a controller and stuff for the amount of hard drives i have in there because i've got 12 hard drives capable in that thing or 10 that's without any pcie expansion yeah yeah that's pure how many i have on there but they're all going through a dual controller and stuff like that. And so I'm bottleneck there. Uh, and so if it's having to go through a controller, I'm, I'm losing bandwidth. And that's where, as we'll talk about later, Epic, some of their lower tier ones, the eight core 16 thread, if that's around two to $400, if they make a micro ATX board. So we'll talk about that later. And I don't yeah. even know what Epic is. Oh, Okay. So I don't even look. We'll get there. We'll we'll get to it. Yeah. I, I mean, I know Threadripper and Ryzen, obviously. I saw a post on Nantech. I didn't read it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, new tech in my life. Apple Watch. Apple Watch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've, How expected. Well, I've, I've been debating this. Truthfully, you've been struggling with this for a long time. A long time. A long time. Yeah. A hundred percent. Probably six months since the original launched. I I kind of liked it. I wasn't sure. I wanted to see where smartwatches were going to go. Yeah. Once they launched the second version that had GPS and yeah. waterproofness, I was like, that's actually like 
awesome for me. That and Watch OS 2 launching, um, which is a huge... Watch OS 4. Four. Four Yeah, because I'm on 3.3 right now. Um, well, basically anything that's not the Watch OS 1, because yes. Watch OS yeah. 1 was yeah. garbage. Yeah. Literal garbage. Yeah, the new one is going to be Watch OS 4, and there's actually a lot of good stuff in there. Oh, yeah. They've so, done a lot. And now they have stuff that Android Wear is stealing. So that means they've made a lot of fucking progress. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm impressed. There's a lot of things that it does well. There's things that it doesn't do well. I'm trying to still see how light fits into my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, right, I, I bought a... I, I had a bunch of gift cards. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason why I bought it, to be honest. Uh, I had some money towards Amazon, so I bought a dock. Mm-hmm. That's a dock for my phone and this. Ooh. Uh, so, is, so is it just wireless charging? Yeah, it's inductive charging. Is compatible with all like the open standards? That I don't know. The PC case I'm looking at has Qi charging. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I was like, hmm. But that's what I need to look into. Not that I'm going to set my watch on top of my see, that, PC see, case see, to that, charge it. That would be an interesting <laughs> thing. No, because uh, like Aces and Samsung both have monitors that have wireless charging in their bases. It's mm-hmm. so, like the stand of the wa- of the monitor has like wireless inductive charging. So mm-hmm. you can grab your phone, just drop it on and be right, like, right in front of your computer and charge it. Yeah. So that'll be an interesting thing to see what standards that support and see if it will be the same um, if they do wireless charging in the new iPhone 8. Yeah, and that's... I am I really hope they do it in... Oh, I'm, I'm torn on wireless charging, to be honest. I think it's great for something like this because this is super nice to be able to set it on the charger mm-hmm. in my bedroom and it just charged. Not having to figure out the tiny-ass port and it's magnetic too to yep. clip on. Yeah, yeah, that's, oh, it, yeah. That's how my I Moto three sixty was. It's wireless charging on the little dock. Then when you dock it in, it's magnetic, clicks mm-hmm. on, and then it also like goes into a dock mode. Yeah, so it's like a standby. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, same light over this. on the side. Uh, the, like, oh, I haven't had a wireless charging phone. Uh, Mitchell has, mm-hmm. uh, but I can see the convenience of the wireless charging phone being you. Mostly for at home if you're doing other things, but it's nearby where you don't need to have it plugged into like yeah. a wall. So you have it close to you and you just be able to set it down. You get a notification. You can pick it up. There's no cable like restraining yeah. you and then check your notification and put it down. But charging speeds drop and dramatically. So I see it in two places in my life. One, uh, at work. Just having it, I can set it on my desk and just set it down because I randomly have to get up and go somewhere. Yep. You know, I get a phone call all the time. Like that's that's just how I I need to work. I yeah. can't like having it plugged in and headphones yeah, and everything. Not else, being like, tethered to something is just a cool advantage during for the it. day. It's like at oh, night as well. But that's where I got the dock because I just set it in the dock and it's the same convenience mm-hmm. as the wireless charging. It just sticks to the dock. Um, the other place I see it is in the car. Because they're going towards wireless CarPlay. And so if you can just like set it either in a special place in your car and just lay it down or in the oh, cup yeah. holder. Oh, yeah. I Maybe mean, cup that's holder. where I always stick my phone, just right mm-hmm. there in the cup holder. So if they built that into the cup holder, then. I think it was uh, Audi has wireless charging and, you know, the little um, yeah, exactly. like divider exactly. on your side. I think they have one. Because um, I could easily do one in my Subaru. I've got a little spot. Underneath the dash, right, I can stick the phone, mm-hmm. and I could literally glue one to the bottom of that, and I've got wireless charging yeah. in the Subi. But the only, you know, thing that will, you know, tempt the fates and do everything for, you know, what they buy into is every open, you know, standard wireless charger that someone buys that doesn't have a lightning connector on it is lost money for Apple for not selling a charger with a lightning connector because they don't have to license something. Yeah. So they could just say, oh, here's Apple wireless charging. It's fucking magical besides the insane broad support for every other wireless standard that exists, but only ours works only with iPhones, and now here's well, a licensing fee for any freaking... You know, now you'd have... Like, my buddy Mitchell has a... JBL Bluetooth um, like speaker, 
Uh, but what it does is in the center of the speaker, it has both wireless charging and NFC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you put down your phone on the speaker, it pairs NFC and wireless charges at the same time. So I see the complete same thing happen to whatever Apple standard they create that's mm -hmm. proprietary to then also build it into accessories and speaker docks and you know, charging base stations yeah. and have another thing to license to try to Ooh. squeeze more money out of it. So I could under, so two things super quick. We need to get in the E3 and stuff. That is true. Um, I can see, I, I understand where you're coming from because Apple is going to be Apple. That, that's just how they're going to be. Yeah. They but have the lightning they, connector. Still they can do, USB-C. they can do the same thing that they did with lightning where anybody can make it. It just has to be certified uh, with their standard that my fee or whatever certification. They're probably going to do the same thing where most are going to work, but they have to go through the Apple certification process, which is going to cost a little bit extra money. But it's just one of those things that Apple's going to do to be Apple. Yeah, it's still going to be open and cheap because we're going to be able to buy them on mono open, price. But well, it's going to be it's going to be open. To, I mean, I can buy. A lightning cable on mono price for that is true cents on the dollar. But what would be even better if you could buy USB C anything you want and plug it into your iPhone and work? That would be I, I would have agree. huge respect for them if I, iPhone 8 comes out with oh, standardized I, wireless I, charging and USB C, it would fucking blow my I'd, so I would change my entire view on the entire company if they did that. I would gain so much respect instantly. I guarantee you they're at least going to do one of those. Probably the wireless. I don't see them losing off on accessories. They're already like, when they went from 30 pin to lightning, there I, was like backlash. And now going from like lightning to USB-C would be good for everyone. But I'm sure there'll be backlash too because of Well, there's always going to be backlash dongle. because if they do wireless charging or USB-C, they're going to be people, oh, you're just copying Android. Uh no, the but world is on USB C. Whatever Apple you do you, people are gonna buy it. I and know. if you don't like it, then don't oh, buy no. Apple. That's why we're in a consumer market. <laughs> that's, that's it actually, doesn't uh, matter. <laughs> that's actually a problem with this phone. Hold is on. I'm now USB C, so none of my chargers work anymore because yeah. I don't have the cables. So but I have like but they're cheap. So I have like five, six cables at home that I can't use anymore. Um because now I have USB C. But when you read send, down... The, send them to me because Christy loses cables like a month. Oh, oh, yeah. I got plenty for you. And I'm tired of buying cables to that woman. But what's awesome is like on the spec sheet for this phone, it lists video out as display port because it's USB-C. Yeah. So I can literally get any USB-C adapter save, and they'll no, all work. Save this for the review. I understand you're excited about your phone, but we need to fucking rein it in. All, All right. right, my second That's our point. Tech news. My second point, real quick. I can see where Apple is gonna do uh, wireless charging because of Beats Bluetooth headphones. What they have wireless? I guarantee you what they what they imagine is that you have a Apple side table that has wireless charging built in. You set your Apple Watch down. You set your iPhone down, you set your wireless Beats headphones down, and they all charge. Yeah, that would be sick. Guaranteed. They have that now with, like, the... Watch it. They have, like, the... Um, the Ikea has, like, an end table. Exactly. With, That's like, what I'm talking about. Pad. Yeah. yeah. So this is going to be S. Apple. You can go to, like, Starbucks, and some tables mm -hmm. have wireless charging built in. You just put down your phone, it charges. Yeah. Maybe they'll come out, though, with, like, a proprietary standard, but they'll partner with some major, like, you know like with Starbucks or someone yeah. like whoever they can pay off to put their wireless and like yeah. everywhere. So, um, before we get an E3 real quick, I have a question for our listeners out there. If you guys want to see a, any type of like before and after, um, cause I'm going to do it just for me. But if you guys want me to film it of Apple watch, I'm going to wear it for two weeks straight every day, get used to it and then not wear it. Yeah. I want to see how it changes my life and change, well, changes how I use the things around me. I've already noticed some, sorry, some things. So I'm really interested to see, like, me go, oh, shit. Um, I have to pick up my phone. 
Uh, well, I know from my journey having my Moto 360 for like fucking three years that's now dead. It like doesn't even work at all now. Uh, battery doesn't hold a charge. It's it's just a fashion item now. I'm not even wearing it, uh, even though I still I still wear it just because it looks good. Yeah, um, doesn't work. But I I think the overall it's like both has to be valued as a fashionable item, mm -hmm. uh, which is the convenience for the insane number of watch bands that Apple has. So you can like switch out to you know steel band links for like oh, it's other super things. easy too uh um, holy shit so that's a big plus uh, i mean the actual watch itself looking the way it does is a different story but the band's variety and availability mm -hmm. is gigantic yeah uh and it's kind of you know a more of a luxury convenience feature, it is. mostly for checking notifications, mm -hmm. that makes a lot of things in your life easier, but it's not a necessity. Like, you can take out your phone and check your notifications the same way. It's better this way. It feels better that way. And it's faster I have been, and accessible. I have been so much more responsive to emails and messages and stuff like that with having this. Like, with work, I'll... I'll get an email, but like, oh, that's, that's something a, I need to respond important. to. Yep. Or if it's not, then I'll just be like, oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, and then you can dismiss it, and that'll dis. If you swipe in a direction, it will dismiss it from your phone too, right? Uh, yeah, you swipe down, and it dismisses it from your phone. Okay. If you good. read it here, then it shows it. It it the, if the congruency is very impressive. Okay, good. Like I've noticed, I'll get notifications here. It won't also vibrate this. Yeah super nice i was so concerned that i was gonna like both ends of my Everything. body mm -hmm. um and navigation with this is kind of nice having my wrist vibrate when yeah. it turns coming up so that was the only uh, thing bad on my moto 360 was it was awesome doing that but then my battery life would fucking drain the shit yeah. like it just fucking plummet yeah. if, I was vi if i was navigating for like an hour and a half two hours my it, two hours of navigation would probably hit at least 45 percent of my battery like, yeah it was bad because i've I've been going since 5 a.m. this morning. It is now 10 o'clock. I navigated for four and a half hours today, and I'm at 57%. Yeah, that's damn good. Yeah. Damn good. Uh, so super impressed, and I like the vibration on this thing. Oh, the sound effects are nice. Yeah. I like it. Uh, so Ooh, what, what about watch faces? What custom watch faces have you got? Uh, I only have a few. I got, like, the classic. Do they have, like... um? Like on Android, where they have Facer, so it's just an app on your phone that lets you create your own custom watch faces, like from scratch or like sideload or not really. Like there's a Inside Facer, there's a Marketplace even. Yeah, it, it's got some. I haven't dug into it a uh, lot because um, I'm one of those I kind of like get one I like and kind of stick with it. On Facer, on my Mo 360, since it was a circle, I had um, Captain America shield. I had the Star Wars Rebel logo. Mm -hmm. Um, I had the Thundercats logo. Yeah, I, remember I those. fucking loved that was my awesome. Thundercats one. Or I had the old school like Ninja Turtles, um, mm -hmm. like a Ninja Turtles one that had like the little small square on it. And we made fun of that one because it was like three hundred dollars smartwatch, and the watch face I put on is like <laughs> a fifty cent. Yeah, watch. one of the one of the watch faces you get out of like the little you know coin turning <laughs> machines, and then it's just like this little cheap uh, Ninja Turtles watch face. It's like yeah, I paid three hundred bucks to have like. A watch face of a fifty cent like yeah. Ninja Turtles like toy. So but we'll, yeah, we'll definitely I, I dig in. Love that. We'll dig into this. I like the yeah, we'll have some dedicated stuff yeah. for it. I I like the the heart rate sensor and all that stuff. It, it's pretty good. So oh yeah. Um, yeah. E three. That's, that's tech news in our lives. E three. Because we'll we've, we've been going a while and we're all right. I'm we've sorry. talked about smartwatches straight to it. So guys, gaming. Let's talk some fucking gaming. We've talked right. gaming a lot before. So we've done like this. Trying to build like PCs Ooh. for console prices. Hold we talked on. about that. We need we need to stop. We haven't even talked about our okay, beer. Hold back. Oh god. What oh, are man, we sorry. doing? Um <sighs> we've, we've we've betrayed everyone. Jesus. So I just have a Sammy A variety pack. We, we just need to pack up and just we're shutting down the podcast. Uh, one, we're done. One um summer ale down. 
So Summer Ale, Sammy so, A, super refreshing. You got a variety pack? Big fan. Uh, now in a Boston lager. Nice. Classic. Uh, that is my kind of default go-to. I have a keg of this at home oh. <laughs> uh, that I'm still working <laughs> through. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's, I, Wait, I think the keg's done. Hold on. I, I was about to say, it's like, we're doing a podcast and there's not a keg in my no, room. It, I didn't keep it cold enough for, oh. long, for how long I've had it. It's not good anymore. Oh, okay. I basically got through it. The keg is empty enough to the where it's now floating in the bucket. Oh, okay. So it's definitely near the end of its life. Yeah. I mean, there's still beer in there, but it's not, it's not good anymore. No. Uh, there's also a Hef in here. There's a, uh, what, it's a Berlin, Berliner Weiss, whatever the hell that is. Uh, there's the Hef. Nice. Uh, I've had this variety pack already once. I know of the course. Hef's good. Uh, Golden Hour, this is a Hell's Lager. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the last one's interesting. Uh, this is a Tropic of Yuzu. Hmm. So this is a, yeah, Yuzu is a juice that's added, I guess. But, yeah. And, of course, you're freaking rocking one of the best beers I've had in my entire life. Yeah. I'm so jealous you have this oh, right so now. so good. Uh, God, the it's Kusti good. Kales, uh, the Groupie. Groupie. It's a blonde, right? Yeah. Yes, she mm, is. Gotta love those blondes, right? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about podcast you know yeah we talking to you youtube <laughs> yeah that, you guys are that dirty beer is one of the best oh it's I've so good had. i'm a huge fan uh oh we went to go see an angels game and we went across the street once it was over to uh the brewery over there what the carl strauss yeah over there? we went to carl oh, strauss to that one i like that one they like had a half lot. that was really good really what was really it? good you know what it's called i don't it's they have, the a, only they have a lot they of make. like cool beers though. They have like oh, yeah. uh, super good. They have the Aurora Hoppy Alice. Mm-hmm. That one's cool. Uh, or I liked uh, the Pen is Blue. I think I gave you shit about this before. <laughs> I, I you did from Liar you Liar. Did. Yeah, I've been to that one over well, there. I hadn't seen that movie since the nineties. I know it's great. And though. you just texted say Carey. the Pen is Blue, and you're like, what the fuck. Uh, all right, E three, E three. Sorry, we right. we had to digress for that. So we've talked about just gaming before, uh, PC gaming, um, trying to build a PC for just, what, double the price of a console to make it comparable. We did something yeah. like that. Um, it was under 500. Yeah. So first off, <sighs> um, Xbox One <laughs> X is priced at 500 bucks. 499 is the price. Comes out okay. uh, November 7th. And it does 4K60, right? Native. Yeah. Does it do HDR? Yep, HDR10. And power supply is built into it. It's built in, and it's smaller than an Xbox One S. How fucking awesome is that? Yeah, so that's the interesting thing. So, um, And it's got like 10 times the graphics power? uh, It's about six times the power of the original one. Um, So there's original Xbox, then there was the One S, which actually had a small GPU overclock Mm -hmm. uh, that they used for HDR. Yeah. Um, That's the thing is the One S already does um, HDR playback. Mm -hmm. And I think the One S already has an Ultra HD Blu-ray drive. Actually, Yeah, I think so. Uh, so that handles HDR and 1080p gaming and Ultra HD Blu-ray 4K, play, 4K playback mm-hmm. and then 4K from apps already. Um, so as like a media machine, the One X actually doesn't really give you anything over the One S as far as playing about Ultra HD Blu-rays, 4K Netflix, 4K anything. Uh, Microsoft is actually um, launching just 4K video on the Xbox store, so you can rent 4K videos directly to them. Mm-hmm. Apple, where the fuck are you with iTunes already? Get on that shit. Um, so there's not, from a media perspective, so for our home theater people, um, One X, no, there's not really a upgrade for you over the One S, considering they both have the same media playback functions. But... Um, for the One X for gamers, this is where we come in. Um, so GPU is actually custom part, not an, more of an off-the-shelf part, but it is a step above the RX 580 is spec-wise where we're at. Wow, that's which, impressive. Which by itself is uh, you know, $200 to $300 card. Yeah. 
uh, generally. Uh, but just spec wise, as far as the shader processors, just straight clusters, there are more in the Xbox One X than the 580. But 580 can't really play 4K games. You know, it's more of a mid range card. Yeah, it can do 1440 at ultra pretty good. Yeah, but what the One X is coming in doing, um, basically, PC ultra settings for a lot of comparable games at 4K. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've shown, you know, um, the new Forza, Forza 7, graphically is comparable to the Forza, Forza 6 that's on PC that has a 4K gaming mode. Um, but somehow the Xbox One X at $500 is running Forza 7 at 4K with the equivalent graphics of Forza 6 on PC at 4K, but to do 4K on Forza 6 really takes a 1080. Like, you can't do it with less than a 1080. Yeah. So, it's getting, basically, GTX 1080 graphics out of a card that's a step above an RX 580. Uh, which, I guess, comes back full circle to trying to build the PCs comparable to consoles, because consoles are closed architecture with a hundred percent efficiency uh, so even you know developers are saying versus pc development that uh you will still have th the best graphics and experience on a pc but it's going to be on you know a 1080 ti which you're already at what eight hundred dollars for a 1080 yeah TI? so they don't a con this xbox one x still will not compete with that but there are certain things that can allow it to compete with like that because they have stuff like um, say for 4K gaming. Um, oh, poor puppy. I know. Poor puppy. <laughs> so sad. I know. Um, I'm going to go take care of that. Uh, so there's things on console gaming that don't really exist on PC gaming. There's stuff like dynamic resolution scaling. Um, so that's not something you'll see on PC. Look at Eric a second. Handle. Um, so yeah, so that's something that's console exclusive that you don't see on PC. So say to keep 60 frames, console games will dynamically scale down the resolution from 1080p and drop it down and back up depending on what's going on in the scene. Um, to keep a consistent frame rate. So you always get 60 frames. That's something that doesn't exist on PCs. Uh, console games, like say the PS4 Pro and some Xbox One X games in 4K do checkerboard rendering. Uh, it was actually kind of crazy to me. Back in the day, uh, which was a Wednesday, by the way, um, 3D DLPs. So like the big rear projection DLPs uh, could do 3D from computers bef way before there was like Blu-rays and stuff like that. Uh, but it was done in a checkerboard pattern, um, which is very interesting. That now our 4K rendering is like in a checkerboard pattern, where basically the game renders sections of the screen separately, so it doesn't render a full 4K image at once. It renders two half resolutions basically, and then puts them together, and you see it as this final 4K image. Uh, I guess kind of like interlacing um, back in the day for our home theater people. Uh, or there is um, temporal scaling, uh, which is actually like uh, also kind of like interlacing for an HDTV. Uh, it is rendering basically every other line of resolution in a 4K image and then doing scaling and prediction on all the secondary lines. And kind of like uh, color subsampling actually is how to compare it. You would get, you know, say every odd line renders and then it scales and predicts every even line and then the next frame it renders every even line and scales and predicts every odd line so it ends up coming through as a 4k image um so that allows consoles to get 4k at 60 hertz by doing tricks that make the image look good keeps the frame rates up but there are things that don't exist on pcs welcome back oh thank you uh so basically consoles do tr can do tricks and optimizations and allow them to do 4K that don't exist on PCs. So like, um, you know, say like The Witcher 3 4K on a PC, uh, things get crazy and you can drop, like say 4K on uh, Witcher 3 max settings, PCs are probably running between 30 and 60 frames. 
Um, but what will happen is the shit gets crazy. You know, you'll see your frame rate drop. I've seen like, you know, test reports where it's like minimum frame rate, you know, 12 FPS, maximum frame rate, 70 FPS. Like it's fucking huge sweep in frame rates to where on consoles, uh, it can stay at say 30 the entire time and shit gets crazy and they can slightly drop resolution, then bring it back up. Or are they dropping resolution? Are they dropping like, uh, FXAA and stuff like that? No, the actual drop resolutions, uh, oh. dynamic resolution scaling oh. in engines that don't exist on PCs. On PCs, you just, you know, set it to 4K and has to render 4K at all times. Yeah. And because of that, you can't have these huge variations in frame rates. Yeah. Um, and you're also, when you build a game for PC, you have to, it's a wide variety of yeah, hardware and stuff like that. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Versus definitely. Xbox. You can test and everything on Xbox. Yeah. And that's, so, that's it. So like developer, like one developer I was talking to said, even if you were to compare it just processing wise with a PC, you would have to give the Xbox one, at least a 30% overhead of specs mm -hmm. because of their efficiencies is they know, you know, timing wise, exactly how long does it take for something to fetch for it to go through processing and for it to get recalled and rendered. And then they can, because they know the exact hardware, they can take advantage of that to fully optimize the process and the process and the system so that they always have something mm -hmm. happening at 100% utilization where they don't have that type of advantage on, you know, the hundreds of graphics cards and combinations yeah, of computers and CPU differences. Uh, that's like one of the reasons that they say, you know, a lot of games aren't properly optimized for Vulkan and DirectX 12 and a lot are still CPU bound because they're single threaded and why, you know, a four core i7 in gaming still competes with the 10 cores in gaming is because they're mostly still single threaded and rely heavily on processing speed, not mm -hmm. on multiple cores. Yeah. Or on the console, they're a hundred percent taking advantage of everything. You know, the eight cores that are in the next box one X and every shader processor at all times and, you know, really making it efficient. Yeah. Uh, so they're really looking like they're going to deliver a lot of, Improve fidelity in 4K games for real. Yeah. Um, yeah. That'd it's, be cool. So be what are some of the games and stuff? What else do we see at E3? Uh, big things, big things. Big things, big things. There actually wasn't really a lot of surprise announcements besides uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Um, that was huge. People loved that. Uh, the last game was like a decade ago. It was for the GameCube, I think. <laughs> yeah, it was really old. Um, Beyond Good and Evil 2, people are pumped about that. Uh, and then Bioware showed off Anthem, which is basically their version of Destiny. Mm -hmm. And it looked fucking incredible. That's awesome. It was like, I explained it to my buddy Mitch, like, it looks like, basically it looks like if Destiny looked better than Uncharted 4. That is how good it looks. And it's open world, it'll be team-based, and it looks fucking insane graphically uh other one uh the new metro game do you ever hear of like a metro last light and yeah. Metro redux yeah. yeah new metro game they had a demo that looked incredible too uh, but that one was driven off of pc hardware that was in engine but it was a target video driven off of a pc um also new assassin's creed that's going to be in egypt mm -hmm. that one looks badass but that is checkerboard rendered it's not a native 4k oh okay um so it looks really good uh and what was interesting too to me is they announced a couple they announced a couple games that are getting xbox one x optimized so they're going to get patches that that will give them like 4k and all these benefits but they don't have those patches on ps4 pro which is also supposed to be this 4k gaming machine so the witcher 3 and doom are both going to have xbox one x patches for 4K and upgraded graphics and all this stuff, but PS4 Pro doesn't have the mods for them, and it's been out for a long time, mm. and they never made the upgrade. Uh, other thing that's weird, though, is like Tomb Raider, which has PS4 Pro mods, is not getting Xbox One X upgrade at launch, and that was a game that launched first on a Microsoft platform for like at least six or eight months. It was mm. an Xbox One one exclusive that's so you think 
like having that exclusivity that Tomb Raider would 100% get upgraded, but really it's it's not. And that one hmm. that was the one weird one. Okay. Uh I heard Star Wars Battlefront 2 was oh, pretty my sick. Oh god. <laughs> yes it is. And oh, man. Call of, the new Call of Duty was pretty good. Uh, um, it's better than past Call of Duty. That's Duties. true. The last one was pretty terrible. Um, and there was a... I know it was going to be better than Battlefield 1. There is one... No. There, I don't no. think so. Um, there is one where it's a... Uh, like pirate ships. Oh, there's a couple. Actually, Sea of Thieves looks yeah. amazing. Oh, That's it looks rare. awesome. That looks fucking fun that looks really good graphics look crazy good uh, the other one ubisoft has a like a pirate Maybe ship it's ubisoft. battle they have a um like an they have a multiplayer like online like fighting one it's kind of like assassin's creed black flag yeah yeah that oh because it was built off assassin or uh, assassin's creed's engine and yeah stuff. it was like the black yeah flag that was engine. the one i saw yeah sea of thieves is like a cooperative like just like Go out to the sea and find islands and like fuck around with your friends. That's like, pretty awesome. You can like drink and so, like you can get drunk in the game and like your vision gets all screwy and oh, like, it's like GTA Five. Yeah, and like you just like go on these adventures and have fun together and actually it looks really, really good. I think so. I think this is going to be have to be a, a nerd's game. Oh yeah, where we get all of us and actually get drunk and do it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Oh yeah, <laughs> get a crew. I was reading uh, Polygon Impressions. They were saying how it's the funniest game they've ever played. And then just like how they can troll, <laughs> troll each other. Uh, specifically, there's like one action where um, like you can grab like a map and like hold mm-hmm. up a map. But then you just like use that to fuck with people. So it's like, say your buddy's like fighting like these skeletons and shit. And he's like, oh God, all these skeletons spawn. Like, help me out. And you like walk over there. Just like stand there and stare at them and just be like. <laughs> like a map. Here's the map where it was like uh they had to like raise the anchor. So they had to like uh you know, it's that giant like wheel that like yeah. you know, five guys are to come and spin and like come like some of the guys are you know like pushing and it's not going up and like, Oh, we need you over here, like come on, just help us raise the anchor. He like runs over there, like stares at all of them, just like map <laughs> <laughs> See, I'd be the guy to like help him get it like halfway up and then like leave. Yeah. So like it's it's just funny like just being a troll uh, like troll ish but still just like being yeah, annoying. yeah. but like, it's gonna make but having fun with it. This is gonna make great YouTube content oh, for YouTube God, creators yes. like oh, yes. Muzalk and those guys. It's yeah, gonna no, it's gonna be great and like oh, I think it's gonna be really fun. The graphics is crazy good, um, all online. And rares do for another good game, so I'm pumped about Sea of Thieves. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sea of Thieves Crackdown Three got shown for Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terry Crews is yeah, in that so trailer. Yeah. Uh, that guy's amazing. Uh, of course, on the PlayStation side, um, Last of Us Two gonna be incredible. But I don't think they actually showed Last of Us Two. Uh, God of War looks interesting to me yeah because they completely changed the perspective for god of war it used to be like kind of a camera zoomed out and very like uh like uh quick time event heavy and like yeah. more like a devil may cry and the new like from what they showed the new gameplay it's like over the shoulder very close and hmm. like a lot slower interesting very slow it's more like the last of us it, i don't i don't really like the direction that it's taken yeah but We'll we'll see we'll how it goes. See. Yeah, we'll see. It's a lot of cool games. Any final notes on E3 before uh, we jump in the Computex quickly? So I will buy an Xbox One X. I am sure. Oh, I don't blame you. Uh, I have you, I have Ultra HD Blu-rays at home, and I want to play them back on something. Are you gonna buy that TV we talked about? Which one? The, one you keep telling me to buy. Oh like, God, no. you really need to. It's so glorious. No. Yeah, you do. No. I'm just going to throw this beer at your TV right now. <laughs> then you can buy me a new one. So, Wallpaper. I mean, just for the podcast, uh, TCLP series of 4K TVs are... The AVS review, well, hands-on interview, said it's legitimately disruptive to the industry. It's so yeah. good. It's fucking stupid. It's a 55-inch with full array local backlight dimming. Uh, 72 backlight zones, 4K resolution, supports HDR10 and Dolby Vision, 
and uh, it has no ABL, which is the um, basically arbitrary brightness limiter. So typically on flat panels, um, brightness is limited to the size of the window you have. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a 10% window, you have crazy brightness. But as you get the window larger, brightness typically goes down. Yeah. So a full screen bright is not the same as a 10% bright. 10% bright is crazy high. And then you know full screen bright is usually you know 70% of that. Uh, this is like 720 nits at all times, no matter what window size. Oh. Guy put on full screen 720 nits for like an hour. It never dropped. So that's also crazy good for this TV. I mean, it only hits like like 90% of the DCI-P3 space. So the color space isn't great, but it is bright. It's about as bright as the well, 4k OLEDs. It's not what? as bright as like the Samsung 500 or $600. Yeah. It's freaking 600 bucks for a 55 inch with yeah. freaking Dolby vision, full array, local backlights. Yeah. Like it's insane. Yeah, how cheap it's all it you is. need to be honest. And like, it's compared directly against, you know, TVs triple the cost. And mm -hmm. apparently they've had some quality control issues, but I would buy it a hundred percent. Like, I'll buy it and put it next to my computer, hook my computer up to it and have a 4K monitor. I was saying I'll buy this instead of like the 4K LG HDR, you know, actual monitor because that's like 1300 bucks. I'll buy this for 600, less than half the cost and freaking pop it up. Everyone, I highly recommend if you need a TV to buy it because it's stupid and how good this TV is for how cheap it is. Can't recommend it enough. I'm, I'll, I'll end up buying one myself, I'm sure. Well, you need it for your PC. You know, I know, a 50, all that room. 55 inch TV just like right next to me directly. I mean, right next to you. No, on the wall, you need an articulating mount. What I was thinking actually could be awesome would to be like um, use it as a secondary monitor, but do like, you know, the basic, basic Windows 10 like quad view. So do like, you, you know, yeah. have a game, game up. And then do like the Twitch stream in one of the quads and use XSplit in one of the quads and like the browser in one of the quads mm -hmm. and like, you know, music player in one of the quads. Just like set it up so I can see everything all at once together yeah. on a big screen with all this resolution and real estate. So it'll be, you know, completely legible and perfect. So, yeah, it'll be really fucking awesome. Be awesome. Yeah, you should get it. All right. So we're going to replace this RCA in front of us that Dude, we're looking at. It's fucking baller. It's done you well. <laughs> It doesn't look bad. It's just there for that. It's the cheap, TCL of its day. Yeah, for like a decade ago, right? Not yeah, a decade ago, like six. No, years, I got it six, in seven years. Two thousand and ten. Yeah, yeah, six seven, years. Six years, seven yeah. years. Keep it up. Ugh. Uh, so Computex, quickly. Okay, so so let's yeah, let's, we can talk about that. I think that. I think the biggest thing that we should talk about processors. Yeah, so let's just go over everything. So clarity real quick. AMD's new lineups are Ryzen. Mhm. Mm uh then you have Threadripper, mm -hmm. which they've announced, well, they've talked about uh which is their kind of Xeon, not Xeon, no, but their enthusiast it's, platform yeah, so version. Yeah, it's so, the so same thing as like, like KB Lake X, Sky Lake X type stuff. Well, for this generation. So, like, yeah. Intel has always had high performance desktop platform. Like, X99 and X99 V3, what I have is yeah. a high performance desktop. And they have, you know, the standard like quad core Sky Lake yeah, exactly. stuff yeah. that's below that. This is like Ryzen is like against, you know, the so Ryzen is against and the, the consumer. End. Yeah. I mean, they're both consumer. It's just one's enthusiast. Well, that's what I'm saying is. The Ryzen is consumer ish. Yeah. The Threadripper is enthusiast high end. Yeah, it's high performance desktop class. Yeah. So it's not four hundred dollar processors yeah. where the cheap ones are. Um, they're you know higher performance on higher end platforms. Um, so we had Intel fully announce the all the X two ninety nine platform. So that's uh, new pins. It's a 2066 pins, I think it is. Uh, LGA 2066, I believe. Um, and then the i7s and i9s they announced. Yeah. 
And then on the AMD side, they announced Threadripper. So that's X399 or yep. Z399? X399. 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 So that is their high performance platform. Yep. And then they've also recently talked about Epic. And Epic is their counterpart, the Xeon. So that's their actual like server, server class. class. And so, you, yeah. Which. Yeah, that I know nothing about. Ep- so it's the new version of Opteron, which was their server class before. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so quickly, we we can talk about Threadripper. Huge amount of threads and PCIe lanes. Doesn't matter what processor you have. You've got what sixty? F- sixty PCIe lanes. Sixty. Sixty. Even. 64. Sixty even. Okay. Yeah, it's um, forty four on X two ninety nine. Okay, so sixty PCIe lanes. Quad channel memory uh, type stuff. It's basically like super high. Because we talked about this before about how Ryzen has chips that compete with, you know, higher high performance desktop Intel parts, but their motherboards, you know, the standard Ryzen platform motherboards don't compete with x99 platforms yeah. as far as motherboards are concerned and definitely doesn't compete with x299 where x399 competes or is better than x299 uh, the big question mark on this is going to be cost yeah so it is not going to be cheap at all uh, right now I, the i think the base thread ripper from what i saw is a 16 core uh part no that's the high end uh, 16 core, 32... Oh, up to 16 cores, 32 threads. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, they're, at least their introductory chip in the Threadlip Ripper line is supposed to be at 850 bucks. Uh, so, which is bad. still cheaper I than... it's 12 core. Um, Intel's entry-level i9 uh, is a grand, and it's a 10 core, t- 20 thread. Uh, so it actually would be more than... Um, Intel's the only thing uh, that is difference between the two uh, is the actual architecture is based on the Ryzen architecture. The Ryzen architecture is more comparable to a generation back of Intel processors. It's like IPC just straight per clock performance is not yeah. equal between the two. So the one notable thing between Threadripper and and epic that designates it different like significantly differently than the uh r7 ryzen stuff is it's uh lga it's not uh the pin grid array pga yeah it's lga okay so which is they're going towards that now, which was very interesting. I think, is this, say, uh, just for the core counts they have on that, mm-hmm. uh, the other interesting thing for Ryzen See? and Threadripper. Hold on. Quick, quick. 64 PCIe lanes. That's not for Threadripper. That's for. This is Threadripper. I don't believe that's accurate. Oh, it is 64. Damn it. I just looked at Boom. it. Boom. It is. Sorry, clipping. I apologize. I get excited. Yeah. Uh, So the other interesting thing, though, for these is um, the Intel chips are architecture wise, basically full single chip architectures with the amount of cores that that they have, where all of like the Ryzen and Threadrippers are essentially two chips on one chip. Yeah. So like the 10 core 20 thread, um, you know, Intel i9 is 10 cores in an array to where a 16 core Ryzen ch- or Threadripper chip is two eight core chips side by side. Mm-hmm. And you can even see it on their pins, like on their oh, yeah. motherboards. You oh, can yeah. see th- how they're pinned out that way. Uh, and that has different kind of interconnect limitations uh, versus what the i9s are doing. Okay. So their lowest end is a 10 core 20 thread. 125 watt TDP quad channel memory 3.1 base clock 3.7 boost and then you can go all the way up to a 16 core 32 thread at 
with a 3.8 boost. So that's where I guess pricing will really come in because the top i9 is an 18 core 36 thread for two grand. So the highest and i9 the, it's going to be really interesting to see where these line up. Um, and just once there's drivers and stuff out there, we we can speculate. the The thing I really want to talk about between you and me is mm-hmm. the difference. Is you can buy any of these processors within this R9 series and say, okay, I've got 64 PCIe lanes and quad channel memory. That is true. But with Intel, it depends. It does. You have to buy stuff. And did you see with the new Intel processors, if you want RAID, you have to buy a dongle. I did not. Stupid. It is stupid. So then people are really grilling Intel on that type of stuff with their new X299 stuff. Uh, Well, that'll be the thing, though, is if you buy like if you just buy an i9, yeah, like the new i9 line, you buy an i9, then you get everything no matter what. So there's confidence. But the cheapest i9 is a grand. Yeah. So that is a difficult thing. Where I mean, the cheapest thread ripple will be eight fifty, and that'll be where they directly compare with each other. Yeah. So we'll we'll see what the performance difference is in that hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. But if you go X two ninety nine and you buy an i nine, then you're guaranteed to get everything. If you go into i sevens, that's where it starts to get tricky. Yeah. Uh, difference is though, and that's, that's where things get even more complicated because you have i sevens, but it's on the X. 299 platform so you have limited pcie lanes and so there's well, there's, on there's a, a couple on a few i7s you have limited pcie lanes well the, no you still the, do until you go to i9 uh, the highest i7 has all 44 so the highest i7 does well, the, the couple below it don't which ones only have dual channel they all have quad channel memory no the skylake x doesn't the one chip Difference though is that one Skylake X chip is like four hundred dollars even, maybe less. So, and that's that's where the confusion is going to come from. Is like, okay, well, if I buy something that's X two ninety nine, and they say up to so many PCI IE lanes, up to quad channel memory, yep, up to this much memory, up to this, you know, what it it becomes frustrating. Yeah. So I know for me on my. 2011 v3 version of x99 yeah when i bought my processor um they had three tiers of processors they had the bottom tier which was actually like 290 dollars. that one is the only processor in the lineup that had 28 lanes instead of 44 yeah i bought mine at uh 630 dollar range that one has full 44 space uh, PCIe lanes. And then above that was the $1,000, you know, highest end mm-hmm. one. Uh, generation after that, the bottom two tiers, so the tier that I have also got dropped to 28 lanes. Then the $1,000 got the full range. And then they had another one above that. And then they had the $1,500 $1, range. And now they're going even farther up to where the bottom three don't have full lanes. And then the top i7 and all the i9s do. So I've kind of been migrating forward year after year on what gets full PCIe lanes and what doesn't. But it's also, my processor was 630. Um, those processors will still be, you'll be able to get an X299 board and have a $400 processor um, versus what you know will be difficult to figure out and we'll see how it comes into pricing, is the X399 boards are expected to be v- expensive because of those 60 PCI- PCIe lanes and the cheapest processor is 850. So even for me, I bought an expensive platform um, and I have an expensive processor that was 630 when I bought it, um, where a lot of people spend $180 on processors, $200 on processors, $300 on processors. Um, you can get a Ryzen processor for, you know, 300 to 500. It's going to see, I guess, total cost wise for performance on when you jump to $850 processors and $400 motherboards, 
um, just to see what is worth it. It's also extremely difficult to fill the 44 PCIe lanes on X99. I can't imagine filling the friggin' 64 lanes on an X299. Because even on a Nantec for X99, they recommend the processor with 28 PCIe lanes. Because even one, you know, say you have GPUs that drop from 16 lanes to 8 because of it, it doesn't perfect for performance dramatically. So even on a Nantec, they recommend, hey, you don't even need 44 lanes, stick with a 28, buy the processor for $290 instead of $600, you know, save the 300 bucks and get onto the platform, still get quad channel memory and get yeah. everything, and it's still a really good chip for its price. Yeah. So that's where we're going to see so, how everything lines up and the cost of everything yeah. lining up. Yeah, and the, the things are to me that matter are going to be... So, like, the thing that I have an issue with on my uh, Z170 board is because I'm running PCIe storage, I have to be careful on what uh, bank I put that in because if I put it in one PCIe slot up, it drops my graphics card to an 8X versus 16X. And so if I, but if I make sure that I put in the exact right one, I get 16x on the graphics and 2x or 4x on yeah on the memory. And so it's like, well, it's, as long as the memories are the same, though, the thing is, if your graphics card dropped to 8x, you probably wouldn't know. Yeah. Oh, speaking of graphics card, um, the PCIe 4.0. Mm-hmm. Uh, has been revised and is going to start going in hardware and PCI- PCIe 5.0 has Ooh. been announced and f- so 4.0 is double the bandwidth of 3.0 and 5.0 is double the bandwidth of 4. Uh, so the thing that's going to be interesting is as this gets implemented that means that uh, PCIe lanes are aren't going to matter nearly as much as they do now. Because of their bandwidth. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's assuming that things don't continually scale up. Yeah, and that's going to be the good thing and bad thing. So it's something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. So Mm. what AMD is kind of like leading towards now is their server-grade stuff, Epic, uh, which they've got a huge lineup, as I can see here. Uh, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine processors ranging from 120 watts to 180 watts. They'll do either a single socket or dual socket. Mm-hmm. Eight you core. say up to 180 watts? Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Huh. You so think, you'd think it'd no, be get, higher. Get ready. Get ready. Okay. Uh, eight core 16 thread to a 32 th- core 64 thread Oof. so it's a it's a slower processor oh well, obviously uh, you have to stay under the same tdp yeah base clock is around two gigahertz just over two gigahertz boosts up to three gigahertz ish um which is interesting interest more interesting eight channel ddr3 120 ddr3 ddr4 sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. Saying, like, i can't read um, so eight channel DDR4 up to two terabytes per CPU, so you can do a total of four terabytes of memory Oof. in a system. 128 PCIe lanes, I like it, and a couple other things that don't matter too too much did did we find out ever for ryzen or threadripper if they support the full pipeline for hdcp 2.2 playback for like media and stuff you know like for net i have not heard anything i haven't seen anything on that i was very curious i don't research it actively because yeah. like i know like the 4k blu-ray player for pcs the drive was announced and power dvd to playback it was announced but it only worked on like three or four systems yeah it has to be a specific combination of motherboard 
and processor and graphics card all have to support it all the way through. Yeah. So I was I was curious if they have announced that yet. Ooh. So nothing on Epic for that support. But basically nothing a new seen. version of Opteron, their new server class platform uh, that looks beastly. Is it only up to two sockets? Yeah, two sockets. But with... So what is that? 64 cores, 128 threads. Whoa. Well, and that's where, like, I feel like with the NAS doing 8 cores, 16 thread, 120 watt TDP, that means that I can do 2 terabytes of RAM. RAM means a lot when it comes to free NAS. But, I mean, right now, 128 gigs of RAM is at least a grand. The, I'm like, two terabytes of RAM. Do you have any idea well, that's the thing. how insanely expensive that is, I can do that is at DDR4? One stick of RAM. I can always add more later as I add hard drive space. And that's giving me a future. Oh. And yeah, having, so buying like one 32 gig stick of RAM, yeah. though, that's, I, can you even do that? By one stick of 32 gigs someday, DDR4? Someday. I don't think so. So, in the way that they... Having more PCIe lanes means that the drives are connected directly to the... Uh, the processor. The processor. Going through a controller. Exactly. Yeah. So, it means I get better throughput. It means if I do 10 gig cards, it's going directly to the processor versus going through the same uh, chip mm-hmm. and creating that bottleneck of read-write... Because I've got multiple volumes on multiple arrays that if I've got multiple people accessing, like if I'm trying, if I want to edit off the machine and someone wants to stream Plex at the same time, Ooh, it becomes a bottleneck. I know, the, and I so know those hard. struggles. I know those struggles. I was, I was playing Counter-Strike the other day exactly. with two people streaming at the same time at, you know, 10 megabit, 1080p as well. And I could see my, f- f- my frame rate hits. I knew what had happened. So it should be interesting. It should be very yeah. interesting. I mean, we'll know a lot more when pricing hits and when actual things are released. AMD has been terrible with like Vega recently. Uh, I don't want to talk about Vega. I don't mean, don't even talk. To we've me. I mean, we're just waiting for it. The Frontier Edition came out and it's priced insane. It's pre-order. Yeah, I mean it's not out yet. Yeah, um, it's twelve hundred bucks for the Frontier Edition, eighteen hundred yeah. for the Liquid Loop. Uh, apparently, MSI has said that they have samples, uh, but they're expecting two 8-pin connectors. Uh, it's p- supposedly over 300 watts of power. It's Sweet. Be super, super power hungry. Um, That'll be perfect for my liquid loop now. I know. Uh, it's, they're going to release it with a built-in liquid loop like connected already. <laughs> no, no. I want um, the one that just is a PCB thing. and water block. Just I am maybe ready to go. They have the, you know, the they're expected to do the same Fury type lineup yeah, of that's having fun. That's fun. a um, Vega. AIO type. They have a Vega Ten um, that'll be the all in one loop, mm-hmm. and then they'll have a step down that has slightly less cores. I actually know that from the freaking. Um, we specifically know all the Vega steps stats for the consumer cards because of the new Mac Pros, the iMac Pros. Yeah, and I also forgot to mention that at the beginning. I totally forgot there's an yeah, Apple event. Because of the new iMac Pros, we now know all the Vega specs for shader clusters and the variances in the models. Yeah. Cause there's That's going like to be a kick-ass the full, machine. There's the full-fledged card, and there's a card slightly below it that'll probably have very similar performance. Mm-hmm. It's just less shader processors, and then they'll release step-down cards below that. Yeah. But there should be two SKUs for the main launch and it'll be the liquid loop and then a step down air cooler. And I'm very curious if they'll do a nano because that be Fury nice. X nano was the shit. Oh, because that nice. thing was like this big, like with just one fan is like, you know, it was clocked lower, but you could put it in micro ATX cases. Oh, yeah. Like it was ridiculous. Yeah. I think it was even better when you water cooled it. Water cooled it. I don't know. So. That has been the news for the yeah so oh, so much we got new Xbox gonna be amazing awesome Some good games this year good games I mean I would have yeah. been pumped to see um, 
I mean, now I know next year this is what I expect. Next year, E3, Xbox One X optimized, Halo 5, Halo Master Chief Collection optimized for One X, and Halo 6 announced. Uh, everyone was hoping for some Halo news. Oh, I'm going to ask. Do we need to do E3 next year? Oh, obviously. All right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, we'll be there. Um, I like it. Microsoft also announced. They're doing, uh, they're doing LA every year, right? Oh, yeah. It's at the LA Convention Center. We'll be right. there. We'll, we'll make it. So for those people that love it, um, Microsoft announced original Xbox backwards compatibility with the first Xbox. Nice. So in your one any model of one, you can take an actual... Well, for the games that are compatible, it's not released yet. You'll be able to take an Xbox disc, put it in the system. It'll read what it is and pull the digital file and play it real time. Hmm, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so you'll be able to play the real Halo 1 on an Xbox One X. I can see why you're going to buy it now. Yeah. It also does... Um, Improves all the older games. Oh, I'm jumping back to it. I'm sorry. Improves all your older games, guys. It makes them all look better. There's no pro mode. There's no like optimization mode. It's just you put in, you play an older game. And yeah. It'll be the best frame rate, best resolution, better filtering for textures, and it'll mm-hmm. just run better. Upscaling everything. The upscaling's pretty good in the thing. Yeah. So so one uh, X. X299, X399, new processors, just new technology, all this fun, expensive-ass uh, stuff. Fuck yeah. Uh, so, Ugh. Sean and I are going to have an after party. We talk some water glueing that I'm fucking excited about. I want to show him what I'm looking for. No, no, right. So, join us. More beer. Uh, yes, of, of course. Obviously. Of course. Beer. I don't uh, think enough. Yeah, we got a lot of beer here. Is there another podcast than this, or are we... Oh, I can. We'll, we'll catch us next time, which could be immediately. I could still or, be drinking Sammy A, or it could be next month. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a we have a range between now and a month, so yeah. somewhere in there, we'll we'll figure something out. Yeah. So join accurate. us next time as we dig deep into Nerds of the Roundtable. Yeah, bye, guys. Bye. I'll miss you. You won't. Yeah, I will. He's a liar.